Can you take us through what the federal government is doing to assist Victoria as it suffers through a second wave of infections? Well, Rita, there is no doubt that the situation in Victoria is uh, very serious and the Commonwealth Government, of course, is doing an enormous amount supporting every aspect of fighting this uh, terrible pandemic in terms of both the health response and also the economic response, including providing some 800 Commonwealth staff to assist with door knocking, community engagement. There's 200 staff supporting the clinical testing. We're paying for half of all our testing at the moment as well. And now, of course, the announcement today of another 1,000 ADF personnel to come to Victoria to support the efforts, particularly on the border uh, and also with contact tracing. There's no doubt that uh, Victoria has been caught very short with contact tracing resources and uh, this is uh, an enormous boost along with 5 million more face masks uh, which will be taken from the national pool and distributed in Victoria, mainly to nursing homes and aged care homes as well. Was this assistance offered earlier, particularly the Australian Defence, Defence Force personnel, and why wasn't it utilised, particularly in managing the hotel quarantine program? Well, Rita, the Prime Minister has already uh, made it very clear that we did offer very substantial ADF resources and we're not sure why they were not taken up by the Victorian Government, but we do know uh, we had uh, a real breakdown with our hotel quarantine systems here in Victoria. And I am very pleased that the Prime Minister has announced a national inquiry uh, to be run by Jane Holton. I think there are some fairly substantial question marks over the state inquiry and also the timing. We need to get on with it. We need to understand what's gone wrong and any other systemic issues here in Victoria we need to get on top of very quickly. So the Prime Minister has been very quick as part of the National Cabinet announcement last Friday to announce this national inquiry. Now, is there any danger that the rest of the country will also go into stage three lockdown again like Victoria has? Are we anticipating other second waves or spikes in infections in, in other states and territories? Well, Rita, I'm pleased to say that as a regional Liberal senator, regional Victoria is not in stage three restrictions. So it's only the Mitchell Shire and metropolitan Melbourne. But unless we can flatten the curve and if there are more cases in regional Victoria, we face the prospect of tougher restrictions. And I believe now there are also discussions in relation to toughening restrictions in New South Wales. I've just seen some reports come through in relation to hotels and clubs. Uh, but at the end of the day, Rita, we are taking our advice from the medical experts. And that's who's advising the National Cabinet and our government. And we will continue to work very closely with all states and territories, but very much led by the experts. And there is a prospect, uh, of course, that there could be further restrictions, not just in other parts of Victoria, but in other states. We can't take this for granted. Uh, of course, I think there was a malaise in Victoria. I think many people thought that perhaps, and I must say, the Black Lives protest did not help because uh, there was no action taken to stop that protest. So that sent out a very inappropriate message that everything was okay and perhaps we're all through this. But the bottom line is that we need to live with this pandemic for a very, very long time. And we've got to be absolutely vigilant about social distancing, about hygiene, about taking all necessary precautions to make sure that we can uh, stop this community transmission, which of course is so much more difficult to track down and, and, um, and prevent the further spread of the virus. Now, you talk about living with this uh, for the time, uh, indefinite future, but what is the government's medium long-term strategy? What if there is no vaccine in 12 months or even 24 months? Uh, unlike Europe and, and the Americas, we've got little in the way of herd immunity in this country. Will that mean we're locked down for years and years to come until there is a vaccine? Well, Rita, this is unprecedented. I don't think the government, any government has ever faced such a crisis in Australia since the Second World War. Uh, but as I say, we are taking all the very best medical advice. And the message to all Australians is that we do have to live with this for the time being. Uh, there are reports even today 
that uh, we may be closer to a vaccine. The vaccine is critically important. Perhaps this will eventuate within the next 12 or 18 months. But as Australians, we just have to change the way we live our life to minimise the prospect of this virus spreading because we know but for those vulnerable no Australians... if there is no vaccine in 12 to 18 months, what do we do? Do we just shut our international borders, uh, the country's borders, indefinitely? Uh, that that is, uh, seems to be a discussion that certainly isn't being had publicly about what is the plan B if there is no vaccine? Well, Rita, I think as uh, the Prime Minister and the National Cabinet has made clear, we want to reopen this economy properly as soon as we possibly can. So we're not speculating as to what if there won't be a vaccine. Of course, there is enormous investment going into finding a vaccine, not just here in Australia, but around the world. And there's every confidence that we will have a vaccine within 12 to 18 months. So the challenge we all hope for us, so, but well, we, we do. That's right. Aren't uh, easily. I mean, they haven't been successful in creating a vaccine for for a coronavirus yet. But I've got to ask you, last question: mm. What is your response to the criticism the prime minister has copped for attending a football match on Saturday? Was it unwise to go to a football game when five million Victorians are locked down? I think the criticism has been absolutely pathetic. Uh, our Prime Minister has been working night and day and to have a few hours off to go to the football uh, is, uh, you know, if you can't do that, what can you do in this country, quite frankly? Uh, we can't really go to the football in Victoria because I can tell you, if we could, we would all be there and I would be there barracking on the Mighty Cats, my wonderful footy mm -hmm. team. Um, but I think the criticism has been regrettable and I am very pleased, I have to say, that the Prime Minister is taking a few days off to be with his family next week because I have never seen one person work harder than Prime Minister Scott Morrison. I am so proud of what he's doing, of how he is leading our nation. Uh, his leadership is inspired. And um, as I say, I'm very proud to be a part of his team.